Okay, good. So we're going to do page 25, and we're talking about modern Canada. And uh, let's see, Zaniba, would you like to start reading where it says a changing society, please? Yes. As social values changing over more than 15 years, Canada become a more flexible and open so society. Many took advantage of the expanding secondary and post-secondary post education opportunities and growing number of women entered the pro professional work forest. Yeah, very good, very good. Okay, so um, Canada is changing um, and being more flexible and open. So um, more flexible and open means it, it has new ideas and uh, the, the old ways, um, uh, people aren't following them anymore. They want to do new things. Um, and so what that means is with many ex expanding secondary and post-secondary. So many people were going to high school um, and many people were going out to school after high school, like university or college. Um, and so that's what was happening. Many people are going to high school and getting good education at university and college. And then also many women were working. Many women were going to work and, and uh, in professional uh, uh, areas, professional workforce. Yeah. So that's, that's just talking about the changes. Okay, good. Um, let's do, I think that's pretty easy to understand, hopefully. Let's do some more. Um, let's see. Um, and now, would you like to do this part here where it says most Canadians of Asian descent? Okay, teacher. Please. Most Canadians of Asia, Asian yeah. decided de de had in the post been de denied the fourth in fed federally and provincial elections 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 in 1948 the last of those the japanese 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 Canadians go, go, going the right to fought a plural people were gra granted the fault in nineteen sixty today every cit citizen over the ago of 18 May, May vote. Yeah, very good. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Okay, so um, this says people with, from Asia living in Canada before they couldn't vote. Um, but for all of them slowly, now they can, they could. So in 1948 uh, was the last of them, the people from Asia, 1948. Japanese Canadians voted. Try to remember that date because that's sometimes a question. Um, 1948, the Japanese Canadians, they, they could vote. And then in 1960, Aboriginal people could vote, which is very, very bad uh, history of Canada. That's not, it. before 1960, Aboriginal people couldn't vote, which is not, good for Canada. But anyways, try to remember that date to 1960. Aboriginal people could vote in 1960. Japanese Canadians could vote in 1948. And now everyone over the age of eight, 18 and over can vote. Yeah, very good. Okay. I think the ideas in this are maybe easy. Maybe some of the words and names might be difficult, but we'll see as we go. Okay. Um, Diallo, would you like to do this one? Just Canada welcomed. Okay. 
Canada welcomed thousands of refugees from communist oppression, including about 37,000 who es escaped Soviet tyranny in Hungary in 1956. With the communist victory in the Vietnam War in 1975, many Vietnamese fled, including over 50,000 50, who sought refuge in Canada. Yeah, very good. Okay, so um, uh, many. So Canada welcomed thousands of refugees. Um, from communist oppression. So places um, that the communist controlled in Europe, mostly, um, but also in Asia, um, people wanted to get away. And so they came to Canada. Um, and so 37,000 um, came to Canada from Hungary, Soviet, Soviet tyranny. Tyranny is when um, the government is very bad and they treat the people very badly. And so people came to Canada in 1956 to get away from that, 37,000 people. And then a, a big, big a group of people came to Canada in the 1970s the, from Vietnam, from the Vietnam War. We had the 50,000. There is many, many, many people from Vietnam came to, to Canada in the 1970s. So that might be a question to you, like they, they, were, they were trying to get away from communist Vietnam um, in 1975 and 50,000 came to Canada. Yeah, so Canada was uh, happy to have uh, refugees come um, to leave countries that were dangerous to come and live in Canada because Canada was a, a safe country. Yeah, okay. I think that's pretty pretty easy to understand that one. Okay, let's see. Now, um, uh, Rashid, would you like to read this one here? It says the idea of multiculturalism. Okay. The idea of multiculturalism are the result of 19th uh, and the 20th century immigration gained a new impetus by 1960s. And the, uh, one third of Canadians had origins that were neither British nor French, and they took pride in preserving their distinct culture in the Canadian fabric. Today, diversity enriches Canadians' lives, particularly in our cities. Very good. Very good. Okay. So multiculturalism, what, is, what does that mean, Rashid? What does multiculturalism mean? Multiculturalism is people who came from different areas, having different culture, and they working together as a unity, something like that. Exactly. It's exactly 100%. Very good. That's what multiculturalism is. But from all different cultures working together. Yeah, very good. Um, uh, so we had... Um, we had, uh, let's see, sorry, the idea of multiculturalism as a result of, so we had people from all over the world coming to Canada. Um, and so multiculturalism became popular because uh, we could see that um, people from different countries had good ideas, you know, and they could help Canada. And so um, that word multiculturalism is an important word. Try to remember that because that is sometimes a question. The other thing here is, 1960s, one third of Canadians had their origins neither British nor French. So that's important. What they're saying there is Canada was started by people from France and people from Britain. Um, but the 1960s, um, one third of people came from all other countries of the world. So that's, that's sometimes a question too. And so it says these people took pride in preserving their distinct culture. So they, they were proud of their culture um, in the Canadian fabric. Fabric is, is it's a cloth, like, like, like clothes you wear. 
and you know the the weave they go in and out so that's why they call it the fabric of canadian fabric because um it all works together to hold the country together that's why they call it the canadian fabric and it says today diversity enriches canadian lives Do you, does anybody know what that word diversity means this word here diversity anybody know what that means Yeah, I do. Um, I, diversity means um, a whole bunch of different ideas. It's, it's similar to multiculturalism. Diverse, when you have diverse ideas, you have all different ideas. So when we have all different ideas, um, working uh, in Canada, in diversity of ways of living, diff diverse ideas, diff diverse food, diverse cultures, so that means uh, means different, very many, many different. So if you have them all together, um, it makes Canada stronger because um, you know they 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 can all help in a different way. So that's what it's saying there. Okay, what I want to do today is a little different. So just one second, please. There we go. Okay, let's do some questions. Zaniba, would you like to do this question? Okay. When did the Japanese Canadian gain the right to vote? The right to vote is like 1960, the first one. 1960? Yes. Do you want to look again? Do you want to look? This is for this is for me, teacher. This one is for this one is for Zaniba. You do the next one. Yeah. For uh, number three, forty. Yeah, yeah, nineteen forty-eight. I think. Let's see. Let's. Yeah. Very good. Nineteen forty-eight. Very good. Okay. And then uh, Manal, would you like to do this one, please? Okay. When were a, a professional people? Getting the right to vote in 1948. So Aboriginal people. Oh yeah, in 1960. Yeah, yeah, 1960. Right. Yeah. Very good. Okay, and then um, uh, let's see, Dial, would you like to do this one? By the 1960, how many Canadians have origins that were neither British? Nor French, yeah. one third. Very good. And then this is from last day. Do you remember this one, um, Rashid? Oh, sorry. We have. Okay, just a second. No, we can't do this one yet. Okay, we'll just stop there. Okay, okay we'll we'll just stop there. Just one second. Okay. Um, so now let's do the other side of the. Uh, the page here. There we go. Now, arts and culture. Okay, so everybody had, had, had a chance to read in that one, didn't they? Yeah, good. I think that's right. And then, um, uh, Zaniba, would you like to read again at the again? Uh, arts and culture in Canada, please. Okay, I try to check this one. Canadian artists have a long story of the age. Achievement. I think this is that I'm correct, sir. Yeah, achievement. 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 In the which Canadian take pray, pride artists from all region regions re reflect and defend our culture and fairness of the creative expression and have achieved greatness both at home and abroad. A power. Abroad. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Okay. So uh, uh, Canadian artists have a long history of achievement. You know what that word means? Achievement? Achievement. But you know what that word? Pardon me? To receive, to achieve, to receive it. It's, yeah, I, I couldn't really hear you because my, my computer's a little low today. Uh, but. To receive, 
Oh, achieve means, no, it doesn't mean to receive. It means to uh, accomplish something, to do something good. Yeah, when you achieve something, you, you know, you have a, maybe you have a high goal and you achieve that goal. That means you accomplishment. So they have a history of doing, um, doing uh, good art, good, fine art. Um, and so Canadians are proud of that, it says. And then it says Canadians, um, artists from all over Canada, they define our culture. So they help us understand what it means to be Canadian. And they have different ways to express themselves, different ways to do their art. And they achieved greatness. So they have, um, they have uh, shown greatness at home and abroad. Abroad just means away from Canada. So they have achieved, they've been become great here at Canada and outside. Of and what I'm going to do, I think maybe I should probably read the next one because there's, it's basically mostly names. <laughs> um, let me just have a double, double look here. Um, okay, let's try. Let's try this one. Um, uh, Diala, would you like to try this one? Okay. Give it a try. Canadian have made significant contributions to literature in English and in French. Novelist, poets, historians, educator, and musicians have had a significant culture in Beck. Men and men and women of letters included Stephen Leiko, Louise Hemon, Sir Charles, J.D. Robert, Julian jo jo Johnson, Emily Nilgan, Robertson Davis, Margaret, Margaret, Margaret Lawrence, and Marcia Char Shay Rachel Richler, musicians such as Sir Ernest Macmillan and Haley William won renown in Canada and abroad writers such as Joy Kogawa, Michelle on the on the stage and Rohinanto. Mystery have diversified Canada's literary experiences. Very good. Oh. <laughs> very good. You I don't got, know how to. <laughs> those names are hard. Yeah, those very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, you got well, yeah, just a, some of the, uh, like my, this gentleman here at the bottom is Michael and Dotche, but these names yeah. are hard. Yeah, these names are hard. Very good. Very good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's see some of these names. I don't think you have to, you have to remember all the names for this, but just uh, some of, some of what they did. So let's just oh. talk. How, a, how we can remember this name? Yeah, there's a <laughs> lot of names there. I don't, they're not going to ask you, you know, names like that. That's too many. <laughs> yeah. But let's see. I, I, I kind of know the questions they will ask. So let's see. Canadians made significant contributions in literature. Do you know what literature is? You heard that word literature before? Anybody? No? So literature just means writing. It just means writing books. That's all literature is. Okay, so Canadians, there's many good writers, many good Canadians who write books um, in English and in French. And novelists poets, historians, educators. So a novelist is somebody who writes a story that isn't true, it's just from their imagination. A poet writes poetry. Historians talk about history and educators. Um, they are teachers and musicians. So those are all the things uh, people have done um, uh, th through literature and, and the arts in Canada. And it says, Men of, and women of letters. That just means, all that means is men and women who write. That's all it means. They write. They're writers. And so these are famous writers in Canada. I don't think you have to remember them all. Some of the most famous ones are this man named Robertson Davies. He's very famous. 
Mordecai Rich was a very famous writer in Canada. Um, yeah, so um, musicians such as Ernest, Sir Ernest Macmillan um, and Healy Willen Wan. Um, that I think sometimes comes up as a question, Ernest Macmillan as a musician. I know it's funny, but let me try to remember that. Um, and then writers, these are other writers too. So Joy Kagawa, Michael Andache, Rohinton Mystery. They're all, they're all from all over Canada. Um, they're all different backgrounds, male, you know, men, women, um, all different cultures. And uh, it shows Canada's diverse literary experience. So that means there's so many different ideas um, in the books that uh, Canadians write. That's what it's saying out there. Yeah, so they're, they're just talking about all the Canadian writers, mostly, and uh, writers of books. And, uh, yeah, I think you'll be okay with the questions there. I don't, I don't think they're going to ask too many names. Okay, very good. So let's see. Um, uh, Rashid, would you like to read the next part where it says, in the visual arts? Uh, uh, the Visual Artist Canada is historically perhaps best known for the Group of Seven, founded in 1920, who developed a style of painting to capture the rugged wilder, wilderness landscapes. Emily Carr painted the forests and the Aboriginal artifacts of the West Coast. Less um, of topic were pioneers of modern abstract, abstract art in 1950s. Most of Riopele, Kupikis, Lewis, Philippis, Herbert was a celebra celebrated scul sculptor, sculptor of historical figures. You know, Jok Ashevak pioneered modern Inuit art with etchings, printings, and soapstone sculptures. Very good. Very good, Rashid. Those names are Inuit names, and you got it right. Yeah. <laughs> that's not even, that's not English, that's not French, that's Inuit. That's, that's very good. That's very hard to, to speak Inuit. So, uh, yeah, very good, very good. Okay, so um, uh, the visual arts. So visual just means to see. So these are the arts that we see. You know, that's all it means, visual arts. Usually it means paintings and things like that. But when they talk about the uh, paintings, they talk about the group of seven. These are, these are probably the most famous painters in Canada, in the Canadian history. I'm just gonna move the screen up a bit. You can see this in your book too. But you can see this picture over here. They, this is the kind of paintings the group of seven did. See, it doesn't, you know, it, it's, um, it's a, a stylized way to look at the uh, nature in Canada. Yeah, so that's, that's the type of thing they would do. That's called the Jack Pine, um, and that's Tom Thompson. Um, so for example, that, does anybody know where Algonquin Park is? Has anybody heard of Algonquin Park? It, it, Algonquin Park. Have you heard of that place? It's a place in northern Ontario. It's a beautiful park and it's all wild and it's very beautiful. And so uh, that's where the, he would go there, this Tom Thompson here, and he would go there um, in the 1920s. Um, and, and they would just go and live in the wilderness and paint. Um, and so they captured Canada's rugged wilderness landscape. We try to remember that the group of seven, 1920s, and the wilderness landscapes, because that's what they, that's what they did. Emily Carr, um, she was another famous painter. She did uh, paintings from the west of Canada, from British Columbia. Beautiful paintings of the beautiful trees um, and uh, you know Aboriginal uh, things on the west coast. She was a very famous artist. This one here. Les Automatistes, um, that is sometimes a question that just try to remember 1950s modern art Quebec. 
okay? 1950s modern art Quebec, okay? Um, I don't think you'll have to remember these, but this name here, um, you know, you, you did it probably better than I can, Rashid. <laughs> you know, you lack a Shivak. Um, he does uh, Inuit art. So that might be a question too. But of this paragraph, the most important, the question that you will get for sure is the group of seven. Try to remember the group of seven, they were, um, they had a special style of painting and they painted the wilderness in the 1920s. I think that's the things to remember there. And then I'm going to get, what I'm going to do is, Manal, could you read this part here? It says Canada has a long and respected performing arts. Could you do that part, please? Canada has a long and respected performing art history with a net network of re region the the theaters and world re re renowned performing arts com com companies companies yeah very good yeah perfect companies performing arts companies that's it? That's it. You, you could read yeah. some more too, but we'll just stop there for a sec. Yeah, okay. So um, Canada has a long and respected performing arts. Performing arts means, um, you know, when you perform on a stage. So acting, singing, um, you know, but more acting. Acting. When you say the performing arts, that's usually acting in plays. Um, and then we have regional theaters. So we have very, very popular theaters um, in Stratford, uh, 40 minutes from here. It's uh, probably the best theaters in all of Canada in Stratford. And Stratford, Ontario is, is 45 minutes from here. It's very close. Um, and they have some of the best theaters in all of Canada there. And then uh, Niagara, um, Niagara on the Lake, they have wonderful theaters there too. So they have um, world-renowned performing arts companies. People all over the world know Stratford. And Stratford is a small town, but they have some of the best um, theater in Canada. Uh, and people come from all over the United States to Stratford to see the photos. So that's what they're saying there. It's a, it's a long history of performing arts in Canada. Good, okay. And I'm going to let, uh, um, let's see, uh, who started? Zaniba, you started, right? Could you finish this one here, Zaniba, the last paragraph? Again, a few names, but. Okay. The films of the Danes Akrant have been popular in the Quebec and across the city, country, and have won international award. Other network Canadian filmmakers include Norman Jewison and Atom Ego Egoyan. Canadian television has had popular following. Very good. I thought you guys would have trouble with the names. With the names. No, but no, but you every all of you reading today have got all the names right. <laughs> I thought the names would be difficult for you, but they're not. The names, the names are you're getting all of you get the names all right. So that's very good. Because <laughs> some of those names are difficult. Anyways, okay. So we talked about the theaters, uh, you know, live theaters, but we also have um, films like movies. Canada makes a lot of movies. And uh, some of them, um, uh, some of the main ones are Denis Arcom, uh, he's this, this one here. He is from Quebec and he's done some popular movies. And uh, Norman Jewison and Adam Agoyan, they also make films and, excuse, films and movies. And uh, they have won awards um, from, you know, from Europe and different uh, places of the world. Um, and they're also Canadian television is popular. I don't know if you know, but they, um, uh, in Cambridge, they film a lot of TV shows in Cambridge. 
uh, I don't know if you've all been to Cambridge, uh, but it's, uh, it, it looks like an old, some parts of Cambridge look very old with the old buildings and they film a lot of TV shows in, in Cambridge. So they, and sometimes in downtown Kitchener, they film a number of TV shows too, because there's a lot of old, um, old buildings and, you know, they look like they're, they could be from a different time. Yeah. So they film, uh, and in Toronto, they film a lot of television shows in Toronto from all over, you know, United States shows come to Toronto to film too. So that's what they're talking about here. Movies and television. Um, yeah, that's what they're talking about there. Okay. Let's see how many of these names we have to remember. I don't think we have to remember a lot of them, but we'll try. Okay, let's try. So let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, who should we start with? Uh, Manal, would you like to start with this one? This question, please. Okay. Who were, who were the group of Stephens? It's in Canada. The French. Stephen Canadian. The confusion. Did you say did you say the answer? Oh. For teacher. Number four? Yeah, I think you're right. Very good. Yeah, Thank seven you. Canadian visual artists. Well, 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 yeah, very good. Very good. Okay. And then uh, who wants to do this one? Diala, do you want to do this one? Okay. Who were the pianists of modern abstract art in the 1950s? Oh, number one. Oh, that's fast. Very good. Les, les automatistes of... Yeah, automatistes. 